The streaming wars are upon us. Netflix, Disney Plus, Amazon, the one that chose Star Trek, whoever owns Warner Brothers now, and the one week of Peacock you get for free. Don't forget to cancel before your credit card is charged. That's their business model, people who forget to cancel. But today, a new streaming challenger emerges, Simflix. Simflix bravely repurposes 32-year-old IP into a dazzling array of original programming. Tween's Gambit, Mole Men, Len 15, What We Lou in the Shadows, Mozart, Marvelous Mrs. Munts, and Suck Suck Session. Simflix, we can't stop you from sharing your password. Hey, hey all you Simpsons fanimals out there. I am Yardley Smith. I do the voice of Lisa Simpson, and um, I am your fearless moderator for today. Um, I am so happy that you all are here, and I have with me the dream team. I have writers Matt Salmon, Al Jean, and Carolyn Omine. Applause, yeah. applause. <laughs> yeah. And I have the dream team animators. I have David Silverman, Mike Anderson, and Debbie Mahan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, we've all been doing this uh, Comic-Con panel. You guys who've tuned in every year. Amazing. So we're trying to do something a little bit different this year um, because, you know, we're those people. And uh, we've actually got some great surprises in for you. And the first one is, instead of me coming up with questions, we have aggregated questions from all of you. So this Comic-Con panel of The Simpsons is going to be all fan questions. Ta-da! I'm very excited. <laughs> um, Thank you all for submitting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, thanks for um, not letting us, you know, uh, swing freely in the Twitterverse. Like, who cares about you guys? Nobody cares. Thanks for submitting masses of questions. You guys are the best. It really is um, amazing. Pardon my split um, attention here while I find your questions. Okay, here we are. It's a very well-oiled machine on this end. Uh, they tried to get a celebrity um, moderator and nobody would show up. So it's you me. are a celebrity. Uh, you. <laughs> You're my first choice. <laughs> so sweet. Um, okay, we're going to start. Okay, it's a little bit rigged. We're going to start with a question from me. Yeah. My <laughs> question for Matt and Al and Carolyn is, can we please have an episode where Lisa Simpson befriends The Rock? <laughs> well, um, do an actual rock. It just seems like a natural fit. It just seems like, you know. Wait, are you, are you kidding? Water. What? Are you kidding? No. I mean, because we actually either... That we, I don't know how much we can say. We are it. We, I, there is a story that we came up where Lisa, yeah, it, and The Rock, but uh, we, we don't, we don't know yet. We're, we're still hoping The Rock will hear us. If anybody knows The Rock, uh, <laughs> tell him, tell him, uh, he wants that. I mean, seriously. <laughs> It's I've only crazy. been saying this was a great idea. Every time I do an interview for about the last two years, Wait, I'm like, so they're I like, so what, you know, guest star would you like to have in The Simpsons? And I'm like, well, I would like to have Dwayne Johnson. I would like him to befriend, befriend Lisa Simpson. Duh. I mean, I guess to The Rock, we would say, can you smell what the show is pitching? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we, we Rock, if you're out there anywhere, we have a great part for you. And, uh, <laughs> the rock, if the rock is watching this. I bet he'll do the show. <laughs> I, will, no, right? I think I think it'd be really good for your career too. And I know. So I, we you know. Uh, I'll lose the rock. Probably you need a little boost. That. You know. Um, okay. I know. Sorry. That was that was sort of. But I'm the insider, so I get to. Um, so here is a question. It's a little bit of a mashup from a um, question we got from fans um, for 
you writers, and then I'm going to flip over to the animators. But uh, if you didn't write on our show, what TV show would you like to write on? Hmm. Uh, I I love uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> uh, I would love to write on that show. Uh, mainly, I just want to like be there and watch those guys perform. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it has, to, whatever I have to do to get that, I I would like to get coffee for that show. Yeah. Matt Selman. Um, well, I, I there's so many great comedy shows I admire. I mean, the ones that pop to mind immediately are um, what we do in the shadows is so funny. I got that, that's a, it's a great world and a great tone. And yeah. I I love I love all the Bob's Burgers and their type Bob Burgers type shows that are out there. And I such an admiration for that universe and their story, their emotional storytelling and the characters they've created are so distinct. So those, those feel like really fun worlds to pitch in. That's fantastic. What about you, Al? I wish I could have been a writer on the Sopranos and Mad Men because those are the two best shows of our time. I guess I'm saying I wish I was Matt Weiner. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. He's a huge fan of the Simpsons. I did a, a teeny tiny part on Mad Men. And I remember when I auditioned and I got the job and I literally was there for one day, but I was so thrilled to be on Mad Men, even in any form. And he said, Yardley, we would have given you a bigger part, but you just don't blend. And I was like, thank you, I think. And John Hamm happened to be on set that day. And he, all he wanted to do was talk to me. Like, I, I honestly, I, I was like, what? Because he's such a huge fan of our show, as we know, because we've had him, right, on our show? Yeah. Right. yeah. Fantastic. Um, all right. Um, um, flipping to animators from the fans. Um, so David, here's a question specifically for you from Alex Simpsons 23, one of our super fans. Oh, hey, Alex. Alex. Hey, oh, Alex. Alex. Hi, Alex. Um, Biggest fan. Huge fan. Uh, what does The Simpsons mean to you, being one of those involved from the beginning of the Tracy Ullman show? <clears throat> it means an amazing thing that happened to me in my career because I often told people that they've asked me if I had a goal when I was like, before I, you know, when I was like at UCLA in animation, I would always tell them, you know, I would love to be involved in some animation uh, production, film, show, whatever, that made a difference. That's all I'm looking to do. That would be great. You know, I had no aspiration beyond that. That's so pretty high I bar though. That went off. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess in a nutshell, but although there's the other thing that's about it is because I was starting it, you know, from the very, very beginning on the Tracy Ullman show, there's an aspect of every time that I'm drawing something that I feel like I'm right back where I was in 1987, you know, drawing shorts on the Tracy Ullman show in some bizarre way. So, And is that a good thing? Do you enjoy that feeling of the beginning or do you feel like, Oh God, have I not progressed? What is that for you? Uh, the, the, <laughs> the first thing I always I say, I really enjoy that. I really like the, the feeling of that because it's sort of like, well, I, I'm doing the same thing I've done all my life. It's just, <laughs> it feels very natural. That's fantastic. Which brings me to my next question for Debbie and for Mike. Do you guys, I have two questions actually. How do you go about designing a character? And do you guys draw at home? Do you like, if you're on the phone, I guess people aren't really, well, now everybody's on Zoom. I was gonna say, do you doodle while you're on the phone? Uh, not on the phone, cause I'm scared of using the phone often. <laughs> I, I, um, I do have an Instagram where I, it's strictly markers on paper because I draw on a Cintiq all day long and I stare at a screen all day long. And so it's just nice at the end of the day when I have spare time to just work with a simple piece of paper and marker. And I just do little comics and I post it. And if people like it, great. And if they don't, great. You know, it's just a lot of fun for me to, to do something on my own. Cause I've been working on the show for a very long time as, as well as, as these two guys. And it's, it's, you know, it's the only game I know and I love it and they're, they're family. Um, so this is kind of like Debbie time and I can, you know, draw 
my own stuff. And, it's, and it's where, where can we find that fantasticness? Oh, uh, it's Deba Doe on Instagram. How do you spell that? D-E-B-B-A-D-O-H. And there's a oh, little- Deba Doe! <laughs> yeah, Deba <Right>. Doe. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. And what about you, Mike? Do you- do you draw to decompress or do you the, like? I, I yeah. was going to try to show you something. When we used to have meetings in person, I would always doodle. We'd screen the show and then we, the writers would go off and talk in secret about how bad the animation was. And then <laughs> back and do nice things to us. And during that time, I would draw these kind of, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Oh, right. oh yeah. yeah. There you go. They're kind of, here's, here's one that's more, it's on the cover of our, so I draw I I love those, like, hundreds of those. It's beautiful. And uh, I don't know what they are, but it's a way to waste time. Um, yeah, I, I, occasionally, I don't do as well as many as Mike, but occasionally I do one of those as well. Uh, I feel like those are, those are like the John Lennon doodles. You guys, that's, that's just, you know, your retirement right there. I don't know. I don't see how you knew that that was John Lennon. But I <laughs> <laughs> when I see those in the office, they somehow end up in our offices and we're like, oh, keep that, keep that. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, my God. That's incredible. Yardley, you you I used to do phone noodles when back in the day that I would use a phone more than, you know, as yeah. a, but uh, that, you know, it's hard to do phone noodles when you're texting. So <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's I, also uh, hard to do phone doodles when, if you're doing a Zoom or a FaceTime and people are like, what are you looking at? Why aren't you looking at me when your head is down? That's, that's not very polite. It's not good phone etiquette. Um, so writers, Chicago. sorry, sorry. Before you bump in, I just want to say, draw. I used to draw on the phone, on the phone book, on the counter, and then my wife made me this very cool box and put index cards and markers in it and uh, so when I'm on the phone, I literally draw hundreds Whoa. of these. Great. Wow. <laughs> You're beautiful. Like animating. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the weirdest thing because it's like free time for your brain. Whatever comes out of the pen comes out. And uh, so that's fun. But that's interesting because I'm guessing that the writers, you guys don't write short stories to decompress your brain. You, you I would think, run away from anything that would put words on a page, eh? Is that so? Well, like, what do you do to decompress after a long day? Oh, well, we used to, well, eat, but now that we don't have a food room, we've lost a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I spend a lot more time cleaning the kitchen now. <laughs> I think during the, I mean, uh, the writing in the writer's room, sometimes I find that we, you know, sometimes it just naturally happens. We just digress. And I, I do think that helps because I don't know, it just kind of, uh, sometimes you, if you're trying to get one joke and you just keep sort of forcing it, it's good to go a different way. And we will pitch on crazy things that, you know, crazy new endings to a show or some bizarre concept that is not part of the show. And you know, even our little stories sort of take on this sort of pitching on this digression. But uh, well, I have to say, we totally miss sitting in the room with you guys because being with you is like, you know, how there was always that one clever, wise guy in school. Well, the whole staff is like that <laughs> <laughs> thing of beauty, but they just riff off each other and everything. And it's, I just I love it. I miss it so much. Right. Oh, I hope that we but do you hope that we, we will get back to that? Do you think there's any chance that we might? I, you know, I. I, it's only a guess. I don't know. We don't know. By the time this show's up, maybe you will be. <laughs> I think it's likely. Yeah. That would be awesome. Which brings me actually to another fan question. They're going to be so mad at me that I can't seem to stay on task. Sorry. These are the most interesting people in the room and it just one question leads to another, but here you are. Um, from Dr. Pop Culture BG wants to know, has there been any planning for a final episode? And I would add to that, like, do you guys ever muse about a final episode? You don't have to tell us what it is. Just like, <laughs> is that in the thought process? Because one would assume we were closer to that than not. Although if David Merkin were here, he'd say we're halfway through, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have an idea. Before, before, I'm sorry, before, I can't do it, which is 
that the last episode goes back to the first episode, uh, the Christmas pageant. And the whole show is just a loop without a beginning or an end. And in honor of that, here's the first draft of the first episode. I just brought it for comedy. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> wow. So this would be this this would be the last this would be the last page of the last episode the first page of the first episode. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Last page is written. That be... <laughs> that's great. That's a that's a leg up. I think the pressure to write a last episode would be so huge. Yeah. It's really hard. You know. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes I, I was... think it's funny too if like. If, if a certain season had turned out to be our last season in the past, which episodes happened to be the last one of that season would have made like very strange last episodes with no planning. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like you could end this show without any planning. That just, it doesn't seem right. Yeah. You know. It also seems like in some form or another, Disney will never let the show end. So we might not ever have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah, they'll be, we'll be replaced. And <laughs> so, uh, or the last episode could be like the Friends reunion where the characters all age 25 years and come back. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at the whole <laughs> it's one, one, of them, one of them you're really worried about. <laughs> <laughs> Find a painting in the in the attic. Yeah. And realize this is why they haven't aged. And then somebody <laughs> Palmer spills a beer on it and then they all, they all dissolves, go. gets a hole in it in the end. <laughs> that seems rather grim. Um here is uh oh, Dorian Yellow. Yes. <laughs> nice. Here's a question for um Actually, it seems like, well, at least David, I think you worked on those, on the Maggie shorts and Selman you have, and so have you, Al, yes? Wow. Perhaps you all have. Yeah. So here's a question from at NW Studios. Are there more Maggie shorts planned? Um, what can you tell us about that? Because they're phenomenal. And whose idea was it that Maggie should star in these shorts? Because she's, I've always said Maggie says more in her silence, I think, than all of us say in our volumes of actual dialogue. I adore that little character. I think it came up because Maggie is free. <laughs> <laughs> like you, Yardley. <laughs> oh, I see. Free, like you don't have to pay her. <laughs> no. Budgets were super low. Um, <laughs> um, with regard to the Disney Plus shorts, uh, Jim Brooks wanted to do original shorts for different Disney Plus entities like Disney and Marvel um, hopping around the tiles. And um, the first one was Star Wars. And we have one that you will have seen now by the time that uh, this is on Comic-Con starring uh, Bart and Loki and Lisa as Thor. Ah, fantastic. Well, that'll, that'll be a non-Maggie short, but... Uh... <laughs> right. Yeah, now she has for a raise. <laughs> the, the, first one, though, the first one was back in uh, 20... I guess we first started in 2011. Oh, and then wow. we got like part way through and then we kind of shelved it. And then we got it together really fast at the beginning of 2012. It was one of these things where you guys called me for a meeting. I remember it was the beginning of March and we were hashing out an ending. I said, oh, this is great. And then I think everybody looked at me and said, you got all that? And I was like, what, me, what? <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, I said, can I, uh, maybe I can reboard it in about two weeks. And I think Richard Raina said, can you make it 10 days? And I said, okay. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, we got that one done very quickly because it had to be out for uh, a specific Ice Age, Ice Age 4 movie, so. Right. It you got nominated for an Oscar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, was, that, was, that was good. That was, really <laughs> that was a good thing. <laughs> I think I that goes that, back to your... I, got, I got this instead, so this is, you know, this is better than an Oscar. <laughs> I think oh. that goes back to your original um, charter where you were like, I just want to be on a show that makes a difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess that's, yeah. <laughs> um, so for the rest of the animators, when you see a script or you see these, when you read the Maggie shorts, do you see it in your head? Because I feel like some people are really visual that way and some aren't. I, for instance, if you show me architecture plans, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I do not see the house. If so, obviously you all are very visual. So when you read a script and you go, oh, 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 and it all sort of starts to play in your brain. 
It, it definitely it's plays fun. as themes. You know, you grab onto moments and you can see them right away because because of the way they're written or because of the visual things that occur to you. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I, I I that's why I love the table reads because that's when I really see the movie in my head. Oh, and uh, I, can, I feel the rhythms and the yeah. And it's great. I tell you a specific story about that because when I read the script, script you know, a Burns tells the, uh, the 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 factory, and it came to the land of chocolate. It just said Homer is skipping after chocolate bunnies in the land of chocolate. It didn't wasn't very descriptive. It was very funny. But when I read it, I fell out of my chair because I saw pretty much <laughs> what you saw was Homer just. So it just popped in my head as I read it. I think we, right? Would you say the same thing, Debbie, when you read a script? It's. Oh, yeah. Like certain moments just grab you and you just like, you want to write it down, like in the margins of the script, like, okay, this is what it should. And you want to say, you want to capture it and save it so that when you present it in the storyboard meetings, you go, this is what I have in mind. And I've started directing and I've, I haven't really had a lot of practice, but like once I jumped into it, it just kind of like fell into place. And, and I did a lot of thumbnailing for my first episode and it was, it's fun to contribute in that way and, and show your, your visions to the storyboard artists who do tremendous jobs at uh, bringing that even further down the road. And what's, what's thumbnailing? What is that? It's just little scribbly pictures, just like about the size of a thumb, like, like small teeny tiny pictures that you can draw on the margins of what it could possibly look like. And they're usually just reference drawings for yourself mm -hmm. or for the artist. And like, hopefully that gets your point across to the artist and, and they can take it further. It, it's, it's almost the size of a thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. People are very big thumbnails. If you're yeah, a giant. Really cool. <laughs> it's, it's really fun to do for us non artists to do, to have meetings with the animators and then we try to describe something and they'll, and they'll be like, you mean like this? And they, just, they, they, they speak in pictures and it's always amazing. They're so fast at like getting this down. Um, and when, so when you gather, how many meetings would you have with the animators and the writers all together in order to get this off the ground? Like when you, you so this, this show is finished, it's first rewrite, then the animators come in and you guys, the director and all the writers sit around and what does that look like? Uh, well, first, like long... first we get the track together. Yeah. Oh, right, duh, sure. <laughs> actor, don't forget the actor. <laughs> get the actors in Whatever, <laughs> whatever. <are> <laughs> um, no, that right. changes the writing a little bit too. You know, the, I mean, it, you know, either, either because you've ad lib stuff or just sometimes as we're recording it, we kind of go, oh, that doesn't quite work or, you know, and then so, and we'll sometimes go very different and, and then we get the track together and then we have our first meeting with, uh, well, you know, we have with a animators? storyboard. Yeah, I, 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 I want to throw in too, uh, by the way, one of the things that really helps inspire the way we, we will block or choose shots is listening to how you guys perform it. Because there's an, as, yeah. an aspect and energy in your performance and, and the, the, the humor and just the way you express it says, oh, that we feel like we got to cut to a close up on this. Or, you know, this would be better if Homer's walking around Marge when he's saying this, et cetera, you know. That's incredible that you. I, I mean, it makes sense to me that obviously that all that nuance wouldn't form the animation, but I, the fact that you go, I think March should be, Homer should be walking around March at this point, that blows my mind. That is way above my pay grade. I don't get that. I don't well, get by the way, if you, here's another quick <laughs> share of a thumbnail, which you might find interesting. This is from uh, Bart the Genius. Mm -hmm. So, wow. says I was we're going through it. Yeah, we're thumbnailing different sketches in there. So that is so mm -hmm. cool. I do, I do know David, because I, I see you. Um, I can actually see you when we have had table reads, and I, you are always drawing in the margins. It's very cool. <laughs> um, you know what? One thing, Yardley, the artists and the writers, I think, work more more closely together in the past, say, ten years than they had. And what's great about that is that they've they understand our shorthand. So now we can really scribble out a plan and show it. And 
they can look at it and say, oh, okay, yeah, but we should do this. So, you know, we get, we get to do those thumbnails and rough sketches and share them with the writers and they can react to them because they recognize them. And then you guys are, they're constantly riffing on it and coming up with better ideas or, you know, shortness, it's funnier kind of stuff. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful process. I love that it. That is lateral incredible. Moves. Don't forget lateral moves. <laughs> Lots of lateral moves. <laughs> Lots of lateral moves. When they're, when they're lateral animating. <laughs> Tell me, what's the lateral move? This is an inside There's joke. People want to know. Like something where it's just, we're bored of what's there, so we change it to something sort of equally good, equally bad, but just more work for them. <laughs> it's not going forward. It's just going sideways. The problem with you guys is a joke always occurs. So even when the joke is said, a joke occurs to you. And so that's when we chase that <laughs> right to the end. <laughs> that is fantastic. I was just going to say, the, the animators have like the, when I've gone, they, they have your voices in their heads, right? Aren't, aren't they listening to headphones when they, when they animate? They, oh. If they aren't, they're a problem. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, the voice yeah, is and... almost a blueprint for the performance. Oh, absolutely. It's so emotional yeah. and it's, it's really just the riveting to listen to and imagine what's going to be the performance. Well, when you talk about, you know, picturing something, there was a, when we, we did Homer's a triple bypass and Lisa, <laughs> you had the line of, we, you know, we were the MTV generation. We feel neither high nor low. It's really, what's it like? Yeah. But that and <laughs> just inspired me that, that very, when I heard that, I thought of that funny drawing of Lisa going, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank God, that is so cool. I had no idea. No idea. It's so good. Um, okay, super fans, I know, listen, I have not asked as many questions as you all might like with your names attached, but I do feel like we learned some really fantastic, really beautiful things nutty little nuggety things here. Um, and sort of piggybacking on that, I have been told that we are going to get the inside scoop on what is coming up for season 33, is it? 33, people, come on. So, Matt Selman, <laughs> I'm going to throw it to you first and tell yeah. me what's I'll, coming. I'll jump in as well. Um, well, the premiere this year is kind of is the most musical episode we've ever done. Like almost wall to wall music. It, it's like a Broadway musical of an episode with all original songs. And we've got Kristen Bell <sighs> playing the role of <laughs> Marge's, vo Marge's singing voice. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so great. <laughs> we, all love, we all love Marge's voice, but maybe there's a singing voice that is different. Let's just say. <laughs> Here I got you a little sneak preview of one of the songs. Here it is. There it is. There's Homer singing to Marge in the bathroom in his underpants, drawn by David there. That's a Silverman classic. Wow. <laughs> it was very fun to do. We, it was a very smart thing because Matt had, had me draw, draw, draw these things for specific song moments to help in the table read, which really helped, I think. Oh. Present, uh, yeah, the, throw a little the visual out there. Mm -hmm. I remember that. That was, yeah, it was very unusual. We don't usually get the visuals that early, but it's fantastic. And uh, we had, did we have a lot of the music at that time already too? Mm -hmm. You played yeah. it. We had a lot of planning ahead. It was, it was huge. It was massive. It was really incredible. What a beautiful wow. drawing. Um, Al, what else? What else do we have to look forward to? I'll mention uh, uh, three things. We have, um, five segments on this year's Halloween show for the first time. We're gonna play one of them, five segments. Um, we have a uh, romance that may come to stick in Moe's life. And we explore the greatest tragedy Homer ever faced uh, with guest star Rachel Bloom, who's, who's been on a show before and was fantastic. He's great. And then- oh, Amazing. At the, we have kind of have a crate at the end of the, around the end of the, in November, we have a two part, epic love letter to to uh fargo because yes to far the show fargo <laughs> as well as, uh, <laughs> pre prestige crime dramas and the world of streaming television as you saw with our new simplex uh streaming network that we're debuting debut debuting debuting and it's i uh, got debbie is one of the directors on that and she did an amazing job and we've got, you know, sort of the 
a dream guest cast of st streaming acting crime superstars, Timothy Oliphant, uh, Kristen Milati, Brian Cox. It's, it's like nothing we've ever done before. And I really hope it makes sense. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Let's give a shout out to, uh, to uh, Matt Fauna, who was the, uh, directing the other, yeah. the other part of it. Yeah, you guys. By the way, if for those of you out there who have not seen Fargo, I cannot recommend it more highly. It is an amazing show in every single category of of filmmaking and storytelling and performance. See if your shot gets clipped, it'll just say, "I cannot recommend it." <laughs> <laughs> we'll try not to edit that out. Well, maybe we will. Okay. Um, Debbie, since you said that you were sort of new to directing, how did do you, how do, I want to know how you get chosen to direct an episode. Do writers, do you choose, say, oh, I'd like to have Debbie direct this one? Or David, do you and Mike, do you guys, because I know, Mike, you're the, you're the big banana up there now, right? I am a banana, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so do you choose, you delegate the smaller bananas around you or? You know what? It's, it's a combination of things. Uh, we, we keep our eyes on talent and, I think David was the first to recommend uh, Debbie for this panel, but she had been directing and we we looked at some candidates and we just loved her work. And so, you know, it seemed, asked her if she was interested, she was, and then she knocked it out of the park. So and we, we, gave her an we gave her an impossible episode. <laughs> it, I, it's a weird to be thrown to the, to the sharks with really an, a massive episode with lots of specific needs, but Debbie, I'm a big fan. Great Thank work. You. Things keep running to the deep end with sharks. Yeah, with sharks. She's a strong swimmer. Right. So, in your so let's hear it for girl power. Yeah. Woo. Um, how many animators do we have? I've always wondered. Hundreds. It's, it's <laughs> hundreds if you count. Oh, Korea. it's hundred to some. It's hard to say. I know that I one time asked. I think that on our side, like the entire staff of the animation side, which includes, of course, production staff, designers, animators, et cetera, board artists. It's about 250. Okay. Like that. I, so I the, figured 300, so yeah. Maybe the animation uh, group is about uh, over 100, I suppose. Yeah, about uh, around 100. But right. uh, there are a lot of them are old guard who's been with the show for many, many years. And then there's people that weren't even born when the show started and they're, they're doing it now. So yeah, what's we amazing just, is we crazy. have many, uh, quite a few really great former Same. Disney animators. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Hey, oh. we came by because we want us to get back to drawing instead of doing, you know, many of them became very accomplished on at CG, but they say, we want to come back and draw. Okay. Have a, yeah. A lot of hand drawn. There's not very many hand drawn animate animating games in town. So we get a lot of the old Disney animators. We have uh, Nick Rainieri, um, uh, Kathy Zielinski, uh, Adam Dykstra. And, and, and these, these people just like, anytime I get scenes from them, it's it's a treat. It's just and like, Carolyn, I mean- Caroline Caroline Cruikshank. Caroline Cruikshank, yeah. Because we really have one of the best staffs in town, absolutely. I mean, like everybody, like everybody I've worked with, one of the things I learned about directing was just like, I, I've always known this, but to see it firsthand, like these people are at the top of their game and it's just such a treat to work with, to get to work with everybody. That's so cool. Don't we tell them that they're still working for Disney again. <laughs> Dad is now out of the bag, isn't it? <laughs> that's that's the full circle thing again. That's like the circle of life. It all ends at Disney. Uh, <laughs> uh, coming up, a complete Halloween segment debuting for its first time at Comic Con, starring Maurice Lamarche. <laughs> Yay! Hooray! Hey, Maurice! Yay! Get the popcorn. In January, Bart was awful. Put earthworms in his father's waffle. In February, the dead of winter, Bart catfish teacher right on Tinder. In March, we saw the start of spring. Bart unscrewed the playground swing. April's known for paying taxes. For Bart, it's known for nude butt faxes. In May... Oh, how many months are there? In May, we dance around a pole. Bart knocked it down with a car he stole. June is halfway through the year. Bart has a sip of his first beer. July is when the Bastille falls. Bart cuts heads off Lisa's dolls. 
August is always a scorcher. Bart perfects his turtle torture. September, Bart won't even mention. He spends the whole month in detention. October ends with Halloween. Bart eats candy till he's green. In November, Bart can carve the turkey. He'll be serving human jerky. <laughs> then worst of all, in cold December... R.I.P. Come on, that's such... What a treat. Uh, you just feel like, could it be October now? That would be good. Um, but we have to wait. In the meantime, we have something very special that we've never done on our Comic-Con panel. And we thought because we have both the super brain trust of the show on the writer's end, and we have the super brain trust on the show on the animating end that we would combine those forces and play a game of Simpsons Pictionary. Uh, very excited. Um, so the way it will work is one, each writer will be paired with one of the animators. And in the first round, the, the animator is going to share their screen with us and they're going to start to draw a character and not one of the mains, not like Bart, Lisa, Maggie, Homer, Marge, I don't Lisa. know in the world. Anywho, um, and uh, the writer is going to have to guess what that character is. They have to guess as many characters as possible in one minute. Round two is the animators are going to draw scenes from really iconic episodes of the show, and the right and the writers have to guess what the show is as many as possible in three minutes. But I'll remind you of that when we get there. We have Matt Selman with David Silverman. We have Carolyn Omine with Mike Anderson, and we have Al Jean with Debbie Mahan. Great. All right. Okay, I'm very excited. Yay. Uh Oh God. Brad. Brad. Uh. uh, uh. <laughs> Flanders? You got it's Todd, right? Uh, yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. other one. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Um, next. Uh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny. Oh wow! This is so cool. Dinner. Yes. Mm. Okay. Uh -huh. Next. <laughs> oh dear. It was a hairy voice. Oh, this is hard. You guys are amazing. I know. <laughs> I know. Ah, I could watch this all day. <gasps> it is Carl, I think. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Next. Oh, I'm trying to watch it so fast. It's incredible. It's amazing. Uh, it can be done. <laughs> it's Aicho Bab. Oh, no. I already know. <laughs> Uh, Lovejoy? He, uh, yes. Yep. Oh my God, Al. I recognize it from the eyes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, oh dear. Okay. You know, four lines. Ah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mo? And Nelson. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Dang, Al. Time's up. Okay. Wow. wow. Okay, you got five answers right. That is incredible. I just want to say, I, I'm assuming they can all hear our audio while you're drawing. I could watch it all day. That's <laughs> brilliant and beautiful and incredible. And the funny thing is, is that there are so many characteristics of our characters that are all similar. You know, the overbite, the ear, the sort of, that it's really hard to tell in the first few lines because you're like, could be anybody, really? <laughs> okay, um, Mike Anderson and Carolyn, you are next. I see. I have to like fight the urge not to yell it out. Like I, I know, I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I just you yell it out, can't you? I, hope I know these guys. No, Be no, terrible. you can't yell it out. No, no, I know. I'm just. Oh, not the I'm other players. Out. Yeah, well. Oh, I don't. Oh, really? 
Yes, you're right. Next. Uh, oh man, this is a hard one. Uh, it's not. Oh, I see. Sorry. <laughs> I know that is. I know that one. Is. No. What did oh, you say? Wow. Oh, oh, Luana. Yes. 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 Next. Um, let's see. Oh, who's my, oh, my my list is uh, folded up here. Okay. This is not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Who is that? a man? Who is that? Uh, wow! <gasps> Coach Krupp. <laughs> oh. Uh, Know who this is? <laughs> oh, it doesn't even look like it. Uh, uh, what is? Uh, I'm I'm looking at his neck. What is that? Uh, I don't know what that is on his neck. Think, think of something you would use in your profession. Uh, is it Brockman? No. No. <laughs> oh man. Oh wow! I don't, I don't know what that is. What time? <laughs> <laughs> ah, rats. That was Hibbert. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh wow. that was hard. Oh, wow. That was hard. Yeah, that was I, hard. I, was, I, was, I thought it was like a microphone. <laughs> you're, you're out of time, Mike. We're still going? No. 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 <laughs> I blew it all. <laughs> it's so cool, though. Is this Barney? Yeah. Our right, bonus party. <laughs> I am. So Barney? <laughs> I lost it on Hibbert. I yeah. thought Hibbert was a slam dunk with a stethoscope. <laughs> oh, no I have, worries. I, I was just going to draw the I stethoscope. Haven't been to the, I don't go to doctors, so I'm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I okay. gave my, my sloppy best shot. <laughs> and now. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Selman and Silverman. They're going on the road after this. Oh. <laughs> it is a pretty good band name. Uh, come it's to think a good of band name. <laughs> yeah, right. You okay. have 90 seconds. All right. Let's start with the eyes, shall we? <laughs> Dr. Nick. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Come on. That was amazing. Oh. <laughs> so I'm age level. What? Start with the eye. Oh. Database? No. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yep. Yes. yes. <laughs> next. <laughs> next. 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 Ah, uh, yes. Did you put music behind this? Yeah. Oh. Chalmers? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Next. You have to say Chalmers. Chalmers. <laughs> Herc? Yep. Wow. Wow. Oh, man, look at this guy go. Gee. No, sorry. <laughs> can't <turn> that out. <laughs> oh. Oh. Database. Yep. Yes. Yep. 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 <laughs> You're tied with Al Jean. Oh man, you guys rock. Wimby. No. No. Nope. Time. Oh. oh, it's a tie. Beautifully done. Was that Squeaky Voice Team? That was Squeaky Voice Team, yes. Okay, Simpson super fans, oh my God, while you looked away, <laughs> while you blinked, guess who joined the panel? The one and only Matt Groening. Yay! <laughs> We're so excited. We really, I mean, we get as excited to see Matt Groening as you all do whenever he pops in. It's just, it's just kind of, it's awesome. <laughs> My dad showed up and you're like, hell yeah. 
Um, anywho, I digress. So we that was round one where they were guessing our brilliant writers were guessing our brilliant animators drawings and they were guessing characters. The score so far is Mike and Carolyn team one have uh, 10 points because you get five points for each correct guess. Uh, Debbie. We're coming back. What? <laughs> we're, we'll come back. She's yeah. going to come back. You know, Carolyn is, she's no slacker. She never says quit. Um, Debbie and Al, who are team two, have 25 points because Al got five right. And Selman and Silverman, who are team three, also have 25 points. So it is a dead heat. It's a tie. Um, and our next round, each of our writers and animators get three minutes. The animators are going to draw clues to specific Simpsons episodes, and the writer has to guess the title. I'm so glad it's not me, because <laughs> I would not do well here. Yeah. All right. Uh, Right. Yes. I was just wondering, do we have to get the exact title or can we go like the one where they buy a doctor? You know what? I, I'm going to, right. depending on how close we'll you come, close. I'll, I'll, right. I'll bet I'll arbitrate. <laughs> so right. that seems risky. Um, okay. I want to start <laughs> with, uh, with uh, Selman and Silverman. Um, are you ready, gentlemen? Um, hang on. Let me, uh, yes, almost, because I have to share a screen again. We get, like, if we get, like, three of these, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you get one, I'm... That is pretty good. All right. I think deserve I'm a steak dinner. <laughs> okay. All right. Eyes ready. Okay. You have three minutes. Uh, Deep Space Homer. De uh, no, uh... Lead to the vegetarian. Yep. Yes. Okay. Next. <laughs> it's either a rocket or a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this is hard. It's so hard. Marge, the way it was, the way it was. Yep. Remember me yep. tomorrow. Go, next. <laughs> um, oh. Oh. Uh. And scratchy land. The one's yep. itchy, large versus itchy and scratchy. Next. It's itchy and scratchy land. You got it. Itchy and scratchy land. You're right the first time. Yep. Yep. Auto. The auto show. Yes. Yep. Oh my oh, god. god. <laughs> it helps that they're classic episodes that everyone loves instead of the crazy ones that I did that no one has ever seen. That's enough of that. You owe it quarter to the needless apology jar. <laughs> Crusty gets canceled. Nope. Uh, nope. The last temptation of crust. Um, the, nope. the one where Crusty, the one, the, Jesus, the one where he loses his job. The one where he goes off the air. Um, you need uh, to get one word in the title correct. Um, Look at the top of his head. The, Oh, oh, Homer, the, you, you give me hints? This is Homer the Clown. Yes. That was a, no, I don't know if that's full points or not. Uh, yes, no full <laughs> points. Oh, man. You're hard. <laughs> this one's hard. I'm impressed already. I'm just mesmerized. <laughs> me too. Uh, Principal and the Popper. No. Oh. Um, Skinner, uh, side, Skimmer's Last Gleaming. The more skaters, badass song. Oh, 22 short films. About yes. yes, yes, next. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Uh, 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 uh. They have the Jack and Apes. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite titles. Uh, Bart, Bart gets hit by car. Uh, yeah. Close it. Oh, oh uh, uh, the Daredevil. Yes. Oh. Yep. Yes. Yes. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, we have left. Uh, oh, right. I can relax. <laughs> How are we doing on time? 10 seconds left. Oh, oh my man. God. Day of the Jackanapes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Homer loves planers. Yes. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. Yes. Wow. 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 Simpson super fans. Matt Selman got eight right. That oh, means, and we're scoring oh. these at 10 points. That's 80 points. That is a high bar to knock down. Well, I have an advantage. When I, when I watched these, I was a fan. And when you guys made them, you were all making them. You were, I was just a fan at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually writing them. Uh, <laughs> and if you count one word, so if I just say Bart, that counts. <laughs> <laughs> Ish, maybe. Okay. I mean, I feel like if you don't get the title exactly right, you have to get at least one word in the title, right? You know what I'm saying? Remember, we have two separate episodes called Flaming Moe's and Flaming Mo. <laughs> <laughs> if you got, if you guessed either one and it was the other, I'd give it to you. Great. I have to say. <laughs> that just seems like splitting hairs in a way that's noxious. Okay. Um, who wants to go next? Carolyn, are you up for it? I ain't sure. Okay. Okay. I'm flaming most, just right, just because I know that's two <laughs> counts as two. So they, they didn't give me that one. So um, no. All right. <laughs> we have right. um, Carolyn Omine. A little more, not so panicked. All right. <laughs> and you remember sure. also if it's if it's you're too deep in the weeds, you can pass and move on to the next thing. Yeah. Day yeah. All right. All right. And uh, I mean, I so wanted to shout out the answer. That's the problem. So. This is Mike Anderson and Carolyn Omine. They are team number two. They are team number they're, two. They're pulling up the rear, but they they have a massive opportunity here. Okay, I'm ready to start when you are ready to go. Okay, three, two, one, go. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Homer the Mascot? No. Uh, uh, baseball? What? <laughs> um, I, I don't remember names. All of a sudden, um, <laughs> Homer the baseball player. <laughs> I That's, feel like you have to know. Like you know what it is. I'm going to give it to you. All right. Okay. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, I'm bad at names. Sometimes. <laughs> Just when I panic, I'll, I'll know the names later. Marge, maybe. Uh. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, uh, fly. She loves to fly, and it goes. Or uh, Marge, when her dad is a stewardess. <laughs> <laughs> it's not called. She loves to fly, and it goes. No. no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm gonna Marge, give you. Should I give you a hint? Marge is, okay. Wait. It's that Conan O'Brien is the hint. <laughs> Mark, did you say March Trish is the monorail? March yes. is the monorail, yes. Yeah, she did. I know, I'm sorry. The student cut her out. I couldn't hear her. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It looks like a... Um... Oh, boy. Oh, that's hard. It's Is that scratchy? Uh... <laughs> Marge versus Itchy and Scratchy, or Itchy and Scratchy yeah. Land. Uh, uh, <laughs> itchy and Scratchy Poochie Show. Yes, oh. yes. Yes. Next. All right. This is. Uh, uh, this is so good. Uh, cool. Is that <laughs> Maggie? Maybe? No. Lisa? <laughs> yeah. Lisa. Uh, not Lisa versus. Uh, oh. It's hard. Lisa versus. Oh. We were Lucy. Yes. Yes. Next. Yep. 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 <laughs> All right. Let's let's see what the. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> Good luck. <laughs> First heart attack? Yes. Is that what Howard gets hard to yes. Howard Howard? Yes. Time. Okay. Ah. That's a time. Okay. This one was triple by yeah. I, was, I was trying hard not to scream that one out. That was yeah. Hey, I'm gonna give it to you because you said heart attack. I'm gonna give it we to did you. Get a little better. Yeah. Well, that was the episode. Be great. So you guys, you got five. That's fifty points. Um, and now. We're going to move on to Debbie and Al for the finale. Oh boy, oh boy. The oh finale. Boy. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, none whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. I am ready. Great. Okay. We are ready to count down. Putting myself on mute. I almost yelled it out so many times. <laughs> <laughs> go. Deep space homer. Yes. Wow. Um, um, oh no. <laughs> yes. Oh. yes. <laughs> Next. Which, wait, which one? Oh, wow. Yes. Wow. Oops. <laughs> How's the OG? <laughs> Debbie is on it. Damn, she's oh, so fresh. Yes. Damn, Presty. Yes. Wow. Next. Um, oh, okay. Oh boy, look at you. Oh, uh, I don't know Edible. what this guy looks like. Uh. Oh, this is hard. <gasps> oh. Bring it up. Yes. yes. Wow. Um. Yes. Oh gosh. Um. Oh boy. Um, nice homer. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whacking day. No, yes. no. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is wedding. Yes. yes. Oh. Yes. Ah. <laughs> Let him go. That's incredible. Um. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the 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 B sharps. Um, Homer's barbershop quartet. Yes. yes. Oh, and yes. then oh gosh. Um, How are you gonna do this? Uh, <laughs> um. Oh, man. Uh oh. <laughs> it's fired. I got that. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> um. Uh. We <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I... Incredible. Hmm. hmm. I don't know. I don't remember this episode very well. <laughs> oh, I know which. Yeah, yeah. I know what it. Partly uh... aroused. <laughs> <laughs> no commentary from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Soapbox Derby uh, show. Um, um, no. Oh. Uh, uh, boy, it's hard. Oh, gosh. Super hard. I'll pass this one. That's, That's it. it. It's the end of the list. Oh. Did we win? You oh, win. You it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Can I say what I know? I know what Bart it is. Art the General. Art the General. Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> Bart of Darkness? Yeah. Oh, Am I thinking of the right one? I'm probably not. Oh, I thought it was Bart oh, the General. Oh, oh. General. I think I got those two mixed up. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. At least wow. I know what you're talking about. Drawing. So. <laughs> Cast on the way to do it. Simpsons <laughs> super fans. The tally is so Debbie and Al Jean have won the game of Pictionary. They, Al got nine right, which is. 90 points. Um, Salmon and Silverman, 80 points. And Carolyn and Mike got 50 points. Bravo to all of you. That was super hard. Super, super hard. <laughs> um, and also, I just want to say, Debbie, I feel like the success of your technique was, this was obviously a game of Pictionary, and you went for 
clues mm. that could be named like pictures that could be named as clues as opposed to necessarily being <clears throat> true to an actual scene from the show that i think was the kicker mm -hmm. that was very clever i was like to ask one question that'll teach us a little bit about you it's an easy question it's fun but i wanted to make sure we have uh, gone down our laundry list that's all i have on my list but is there anything else oh, you want to talk i have about? one thing i want to share yeah um, you were talking about the writer's drawing, and uh, here here's a, a drawing that that Matt Selman did for a character in Halloween of Horror, and and I did the character for it next to it. <laughs> and I had him sign it. <laughs> written, written by Carolyn. Yeah, written by Carolyn. You still want to work with me, right, Carolyn? Can you show that again? Yeah, absolutely. Let's show that again. Yeah, show that again. It, yeah, we couldn't see it. No, hold still. That's great. I'm the. I'm on the left. <laughs> <laughs> no, you uh, make it like wait, a, is that is that a yes. self portrait? <laughs> 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 it's a tough room no, here. I, I, it. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Glorious. <laughs> Incredible. Um, before also that before, was so much fun. Um, so, uh, fans, favorites and fans, before we sign off, I have one more question for our whole team, but before I do that, I just have to give a, sh a shout out to Juliet Kaufman, who is Matt Selman's writing assistant. She's a brilliant human. She really was sort of the underpinnings of this, helping make it go. So we have to give a big nod to Juliet. She is a whiz. Mm -hmm. There's pretty much anything, she, nothing she can't do. So thank you, Juliet, for that. Thank you, you Juliet. A rock Thanks, star. Julia. Thank you. Um, all right. You so wrong. I would like to sign off with one question that's not necessarily related to the show, but will tell us a little something about you because you guys are the most interesting people in the room. And I really mean that. And so my question is, do you have a nickname that either you refer to yourself as, that other people refer to you. I have like nine. My name, Yardley, seems to lend itself to all kinds of incarnations of things that have nothing that sound like Yardley. So, um, Carolyn, since you're at the top of my screen, I'll start with you. Uh, let's see, well, for a long time as a kid and, uh, and through high school, I had people used to call me Corky. 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 Yeah. Yep, that was a you know why? Time. Uh, you know, I think I, I there was a a teacher who sort of gave everybody nicknames, and uh, that was one she gave me. I remember she gave uh, a guy whose name was Daniel. She decided he would be called Danielle, and I remember thinking, I bet he doesn't like that. But, uh, wow. but I, I I I did well with mine, but. Uh, <laughs> That's great. Al, do you have a nickname? Yes, my dad has the same name. So even though I grew to six foot two and 240, I've been little Al for a long time. Uh, <laughs> that's so great. Is, is there anybody in your life that still calls you little Al? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Debbie? Um, well, my husband actually started, he used to call me Debido, which is how I ended up with, with the handle, my IG handle. Um, but in college, um, we had a game called uh, D-Day. It was like a character game, kind of like a drawing game, like what we just did. Um, uh, but it was caricatures of other students. And we got to dress up like um, our wrestling personas. And I decided to dress up like a, a dominatrix. And then people started calling me the Debonatrix. And so... <laughs> That kind of became my nickname in college. It's the Debonatrix. Anytime I'd walk down the hall, I was like, that's what I'd hear. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. David? Well, two came up in, uh, in like, I think, junior high. One was Silks, and the other was Sylvie. Then George Meyer used to call me Sylvie, but I think he just sort of came across about that uh, on his own. Uh, and, of course, when I was younger, it was Davey, my cousin Mikey, calls me Davy still, so Davey. Yeah, that's about it. That's so funny. Um, I love that. I just, I just think it's such a great little granular piece of personal history that I can't get enough of. Matt Selman? Um, in high school, friends called me Selmo, which I'm kind of... <laughs> Although no, you guys. So if anyone wants to bring that back, I'm up. I'm up for it. And then, <laughs> for some reason, 
Two groups of people in my life called me Maddie, and only two groups, gym coaches and Hollywood agents. <laughs> <laughs> no, Maddie, like kind of bullies, you know, bullies. <laughs> wow. And does your, like, does your wife have a nickname for you? Mm, all I know is if I hear her say my name out loud, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Ah, uh oh. Right. I I do know if somebody calls me Yardley, which they almost never do. Well, they do at work, but uh yeah, I'm I'm like, uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Something's not right. <laughs> Mike Anderson, do you have a nickname? I I have a couple little anecdotes. When in high school I was called Ander Buns. Ander Buns? What's that? That <laughs> was so good. Um uh but when I was a teenager, I Bambi came to town the reissue and it was in a theater and I convinced all my friends to go and we all watched Bambi and I was really loving it. And they were talking and being jerks and I hated it. And then we came out and they said, Oh, that movie sucked. That's for kids. And I said, what sucked about it? You can call me a flower if you want to. So they started calling me flower. And when I got mad, it really stuck and it stuck around for junior <laughs> high, a couple of years. Oh, and they wow. called me flower and it just made me mad. <laughs> but my dad just oh. called me numb nuts. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't believe that. Matt Groening, do you have a nickname? Well, like Matt Selman, I was called Maddie, but mine mine came from the uh, the mascot for the Mattel toy company, who was named Maddie Mattel. Oh. He was a little kid in a striped shirt who wore a crown. And the slogan of Mattel at that time was, you can tell it's Mattel, it's swell. <laughs> and uh, in my grade school, that slogan was changed while pointing at me. You can tell it's Mattel, it smells. And then, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> and and now, I won't even I won't even go into the high school nickname, which was Matt Groin Injury. Uh. <laughs> That's so brutal. I know. And brutal. Do you have like do your loved ones have a nickname for you? Uh, my wife, who is from Argentina, takes anybody with a one syllable name and, and adds an O to it. So I am Matto. Matto. Oh, that's great. Oh. oh, you guys. You guys are awesome. Yardley. Yeah. What about your nickname? Oh, I have, <clears throat> I have so many. Um, so Detective Dan, who, you know, I have the true crime podcast, Small Town Dicks. And so, but Detective Dan and I are going to get married. We were going to get married this summer, but now we've pushed it. Anywho, he calls me Squirrel because yeah. I think it rhymed, because I think it started out as Squirrely Girl. Um, and then I have my trainer that I've had for 20 years. He calls me oodles. It started out as Yardley Oodley. <laughs> Nancy Cartwright calls me Yardle Maker, but shortens it to Yardle. Hank calls me Yardle. My brother calls me Nemo, which is a long story. Um, <laughs> and uh, my mother used to call, um, Yardley is my father's middle name. So although he wasn't called Yardley, he was called JY, which were his initials, Joseph Yardley. Um, but I was always called Little Y yeah. and um, uh -huh. sort of like Little Al. And uh, what else? And, and Yard, Yards. And I had one friend who called me Yar which is kind of great because that's reminds me of Catherine Hepburn, like, oh, she is yar, which you say about a boat, like a boat that's good and steady. Yeah. You know? I, <laughs> I was thinking of like sea captain. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Um, and then if you were teasing me, it was yard weed, yard dog, yard stick, um, meterly, inchly, footly. The list is long. It's Ow. long. So. <laughs> Um, anyway, well, I think that wraps it up. I think we've uh, sucked up all the oxygen in the room for an hour, and I have had a great time. You guys are phenomenal. I really wish we could do this more often. Thank you so much for your time. To the fans, you guys are the best. We wouldn't be here without you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you guys, wave to the people. Bye. Thank you, thank you everybody, for watching. See you in San Diego.